Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante, and welcome back to the cheating tutorial. Or should I say just a Black Widow painting process? Because that's what it really is. So yeah, this is where we stopped in the previous episode. Our widow dummy standing in a room that has no furniture or anything except for the walls and the holes in them. And right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna position basic furniture around the area to finalize the actual location to know where we can put the characters. Anything we need to define in a perspective to have a good grip on the geometry in this environment that we'll use later in a painting. So we'll start doing that. But before that, if you haven't seen the previous video, a couple of things to answer your guys' comments. A uh, first thing, someone said that I need to be using the filmic add-on for Blender after I said that you don't need any plugins for this, like it's all in one package. Well, thing is, in uh, Blender 2.8 version, the alpha, this filter is already included. It's actually been included in the previous version as well. Keep forgetting where it is. Color management. Yeah, so you can see Filmic is on by default. So it's just a part of Blender now. Proper colors will be showing up in any rendering whatsoever. No weird contrasts or anything. And another thing, another plugin that you guys recommended me to install was called like image to plane where you can drag and drop an image into the viewport and it immediately appears as a special kind of plane with that image as a texture on it so it's a really quick way to drop pictures into the scene well also included in 2.8 so I just grab the picture of our doodle that we did in the previous episode and here it is right here in the 3d space I'll press alt G alt R and it's in default position in the origin of the universe and we'll put it in 90 degrees angle I'll let it just stay right here it's already set up really well in a sense that it doesn't receive shadows or cast shadows so it's just just a floating image with no influence on the environment rendering wise. We'll just keep it right here and yeah this is a great place to just take a look at our reference and remember that we have a piece of furniture right here it's gonna be some kind of uh, cupboard or whatever it is like a little table and I don't know we'll probably add the actual paintings on the walls because they should be in the proper perspective so we wouldn't have to guess how exactly they will fit into this geometry. We'll add some kind of dummy for the chandelier, but just the basic axes or something like that. So we would just know where it is, unless we need it to be a bit more precise later. We'll make it more precise then. But yeah, and maybe the curtains, also a thing. And probably we'll also have some time in this episode to create and position the kids and position our Black Widow, maybe with a dress. We'll see how it goes. So let's actually start building stuff and listen to some music. Oh my god, I'm so impressed by this right now. Like really trying out all kinds of techniques to make the modeling of this chair faster. And oh my god, like Blender has anything I can think of. Bridging two polygons and creating a hole between them automatically by just using a bridge command. So it's creating this hole in between these two polygons in one action and also I can see I made a mistake right here let me fix it real quick so yeah like this connect vertex yeah and this was really cool I connected before I had anything in here I selected this vertex and this one it made a connection then I selected this vertex and this one and it connected them automatically creating a vertex right here and here how cool is that 
everything is automatic, like everything is done right. No stupid stuff, really cool. So I'm not sure about the proper size of this chair. I just made sure that its seating area is on the level of the knees of a person, because that makes sense for a comfortable chair, right? You sit down by bending knees. So that's how I made a chair. And I placed it next to a wall because that's how you placed furniture when there was no television. And yeah, an extra box, maybe it's gonna be some kind of chest or something, I don't know. It looks kind of good from the camera view. So this line right here is gonna be the doorway, by the way. So keeping that in mind, everything should be a bit closer. And maybe we'll add another chair. Maybe right here. I don't know. Maybe it's just too much chairs in the end, but let's keep it there for now We'll move things around is gonna be quick in that I think I want to add a few of dissections in this Yeah, like three will be enough just as a guide when I'll be drawing the actual Shelves or anything so in a sketch it will actually look like this. It'll be cool So yeah, we have some stuff already. Let's add the chandelier and then the paintings Alright, looking good already, the room becomes a bit more alive, and with the sketch on top we have quite a lot of information to use when we'll be painting, like tiny lines for some kind of a, I don't know how to call this in English, this little thing, line between the floor and the wall. Uh, right now the only thing that's really bothering me is the window. We obviously should add the actual frame of the window, that's an important geometry guide, and probably, I'm not sure if we really need to add the curtains. I think we should, they will affect the lighting, so that's a good idea to add them then. Uh, that's why I added this box right here, even though it's not even in the shot. It's like over, over there to the right, but I just put it there so it would affect the lighting, otherwise the lighting may actually slightly give away that there is nothing going on in this corner, like a lot of bouncing light may give this effect that a viewer won't even even be able to tell but it will just give the impression that the room is fake so adding big objects like this behind the shot may be a good idea anyway it was a split second of work so whatever so yeah this is uh, what we have I'll do the window now but one thing I wanted to show you another cool stuff with the modeling it's been a while since I actually modeled anything in a 3D app, so check this out how it works awesomely. Something that I learned to do in Maya, but not to this extent. Just alt-clicking a polygon will select a loop. Same thing would be with the edge, for instance, if I would be in the edge mode and alt-clicked, it's immediately selecting the loop. So I selected the loop, and then I pressed select, checker deselect, and it's now having like every other one selected. And then I just press E and extrude with uh, individual origins, so all the extruded surfaces wouldn't move in one direction, but actually perpendicular to the each origin of the individual polygon. And that's how easily I created this amazing chandelier, designer chandelier, I would say. Yeah, I'll probably change it, I like created a general guide for now, like what chandelier may have. Like, I don't want to go through too much references right now, I just want to model the base. And then already on iPad, I may look at it and like, okay, I wanted this kind of design. And then I can quickly go back to Blender and change the geometry of this thing if I need more guidance than this thing provides already. Quickly update my sketch. So that's the point. Pretty cool. So yeah, let's move on to that window.
Should this window be open? Probably, right? Let's open one of the halves. I think the right one, so it would introduce some air in this direction. Maybe we'll use that somehow. Probably not, but let's give it a try. Oh cool, I'm editing both objects, like I separated these polygons from these, so it's a separate object now, and I select both of them, enter edit mode, and I'm editing both of them at the same time. How cool is that? So I wanted to create like a actual handle, at least some kind of guide for the handle, and it's probably a good idea to have them the same way. Oh, that's what I was talking about, they are moving the same direction, so individual origins. All right, so I added a carpet right here. So the Black Widow will be dropping raw meat right onto the carpet. Add G. Hmm, so this kind of layout. Again, this is the wall. We won't see anything behind this. There, this is how it's gonna be. So right now we should probably start creating kids. But before we do that, I think I wanna add a basic shape of a dress to the Widow. Because what I thought of, it should be like a really big dress really long that is just spread all over the place like a, you know like a nest in a way in all directions like it's intentionally put this way so it would cover a lot of the floor like this that'll be cool so let's add that guide just at the bottom part we'll add this kind of a dress shape Alright, so this is the dress for now. I don't know. It looks kind of cool with a strong perspective reaching for us. Maybe it'll have like some kind of spiky, I don't know, elements on the edges of it. But for now, this is good enough. Maybe we'll make some of the kids kind of like push into it. Especially the one that will be over here, like hiding behind the dress. We will see some kind of indent from his presence. But in here as well, definitely. So kids are gonna be all over this dress in a way. It's gonna look kind of cool and tactile. I like that. So yeah, for now, I have no other ideas but to create a new dummy with a proportion of a kid. So let's do that. And probably that will be the end of the episode. So yeah. <laughs> hmm, is that enough? just scaled down the whole body and then made the head a bit bigger. Pretty much, maybe even bigger head, right? I mean, I'll still be able to change it a lot in the actual painting, so it doesn't really matter precisely how much we scale it up, but the more precise, the better in any case. So yeah, I'm guessing this is the size of a kid. Maybe smaller though, I don't know. Yeah, they were really small in this one. Although he's like crouching a little bit. Yeah, they're probably just about that. It's just that none of them are actually standing up straight. They're all crawling around, so this is just about right. Mm, let's make a, like a universal crouching position for this kid, I guess, since they're all gonna be in it. Some superhero stance. Naruto stands, of course. Well, I guess something like this. Surprisingly, it's actually really cool to position this dummy. No offense, kid. But yeah, it was really cool. And he's like all over the place. <laughs> mm, there he is. So 
so yeah, we'll definitely press this dress inwards right here. So the kid will be standing somewhere around here, sneaking out of it. And then there will be a whole bunch of other ones in the next episode. And for now, let's actually check out what the final render would look like. Nice, the window and everything, pretty cool. Let's maybe create another one right now. The one that is on the piece of furniture over here. I'm occasionally looking over here to check where the kid is actually going to be on the canvas, because that's all that matters. Hmm, that's some huge furniture, I guess. Something that I expected of myself to do. Uh, it's huge, I mean, like this. It should probably be a bit less thick. Actually stand on the very edge. Let's avoid some tangents. This is unpleasant. Something like this. Yeah, we'll make uh, more of a custom poses for them later. At first we may like clone them and position them all in this one pose and then make adjustments to the ones that are actually fully visible or something like that. Also, they may have slightly different sizes of their bodies. Also makes sense. But for now, yeah, I guess this is it. Black Widow in a dress with a lot of furniture and two kids. Well, this was awesome. Enjoying the process so much. This is so cool. Like knowing that I'm just chilling and deciding on what should actually be going on in the painting idea wise and not trying to make sure that I didn't mess up the geometry again or anything. So just quickly dropping these simple shapes all over the place, copying them easily, moving them around if something's wrong and everything like I have the ability to create a perfect sketch. I'm not restricted by having to redraw anything. This is so cool. And the process of modeling is so good. Blender is really impressive in that. Like all the tools, all the commands I need, everything is here and it's working perfectly. So yeah, hope that was cool to watch. I think this episode was really fun. We'll try to make the next one as soon as possible. And for now, this is it. Tell me guys what you think. If you have any ideas on what to change with this uh, location or whatever. I remember someone said to make maybe the ceiling even taller, which totally actually makes sense. Let's actually make it right now. That's gonna be uh, presumably just uh, one second of work. So select polygon, control plus to increase selection and move upwards to a global height of uh, what four meters and make sure that the connection of the chandelier is actually reaching the ceiling. Yeah, now it will probably look much more like an actual Victorian times room. Let's see what it looks like in render. Oh yeah, the ceiling became darker. That's so good. And that's what's always been depressing about old apartments, old rooms like that, that the ceiling is really tall, which makes the whole room very narrow, and the ceiling is always really dark because all the lighting is at the bottom. Yeah, this is working so well, like so much better than before. Awesome. We'll add probably some, some kind of extrusion uh, line over here, some kind of decorative stuff. I'm pretty sure they did that in Victorian design. So yeah, we'll add a little stuff like that in the next episode, as well as a lot of kids. And we'll also play around with actual rendering, adding all kinds of colors and lighting that we may need to make sure we get as close to the base color of the painting as possible. So yeah, this is it. Tell me your ideas in the comments if you think we should add or remove or change anything. And I thank you for watching if you did. I guess I did if you're here. Love a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. X Rude, do whatever you want, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. For how many days have I been wearing this outfit? Hey, it's cold enough in this room to afford that. Don't judge me.